Hello everybody, Grey Steel Plays, and we're back with another RimWorld tutorial for you. This is another requested tutorial that is going along with the last three skills that I did in my tutorial, which were melee, ranged, or shooting in this game, and medicine. And now we're looking into the three C's of RimWorld. That's going to be cooking, construction, and crafting. In this tutorial, we're going to be going out over how to gain skill in each one of those things. This is not going to be all-encompassing or anything, and I would consider this more of a beginner tutorial than someone who has basically become an expert at all things RimWorld. If you don't know some of the better ways to get your skill up, though, stay tuned because I'll be showing you. Now, the three C's in RimWorld are kind of nice skills to get up because you almost always have access to being able to increase their numbers. Now... A few of these skills are gained differently than each other. Cooking is mostly gained in chunks. Construction is mostly gained by the work amount that is done to whatever you're creating. And crafting is mostly done also by the work amount of whatever you're crafting, except oddly for stone blocks and smelting as well. But we're going to go into that in a little bit. Let's start off with cooking. So things to know about cooking. First off, cooking skill is required to do a couple of things. If you want to make fine meals, which can give your colonists a plus five bonus to their mood modifier, that takes at least a six in your cooking skill. If you want to make lavish meals, which gives a plus ten to the mood modifier, that takes at least a ten skill in cooking. And each point in cooking decreases the cooking time by 11%, decreases the butchering time by 10%, and interestingly, and this is actually very important, increases the meat amount that you gain from butchering by 2.5%. So consider that for a second. A cook with a 10 in cooking compared to a cook with a 0 in cooking will get 25% more meat per creature that is butchered. So if you really want to min-max things out, you always want to make sure that your best cook is doing the butchering. Now, EXP-wise, you're going to be looking at a couple of different things when you're cooking. Now, if you go to the Room World Wikipedia, you'll see some numbers that mention how much experience is given per the task being simple meals, fine meals, and lavish meals. I've also investigated kibble and butchering as well as those were not on the Wikipedia. But I will also say that the numbers that I've gotten were a little bit different than on the Wikipedia. The Wikipedia had 60 experience for simple meals, 110 experience for fine meals, and 160 experience for lavish meals. What I found was that utilizing Fabigrate over here, who is a character with a burning passion, in cooking, which means they have two fires and gain the skill at 150%. He gained 66 experience points doing simple meals, 97 experience points doing fine meals, and 117 experience doing lavish meals. So kind of interesting there. Kibble, he also got 65 experience points, and butchering, he got 98 experience points. So something to recognize is that making kibble for your critters, which does require a lot of materials, I'll go into that in a second too and why I'm not too fond of kibble, does get you the same experience as making a simple meal. Meanwhile, butchering gets you roughly the same experience as making a fine meal. Now, one of the reasons that I don't like kibble being made is, and this is just a personal preference, it's because of the sheer amount of work that goes into making kibble and the amount of resources that it uses and the... You, you don't get very much benefit from it. So why am I not that impressed with kibble? This is just going to be a real quick tip for you guys. I'm going to try and run through this really fast. So if you make kibble, it takes 40 items worth of food products. It takes 20 vegetables, which could be hay, and it takes 20 meat, which could be like human meat or whatever have you. So if you have a lot of spare of that, you could utilize that to create your kibble. But what it does is it takes 40 food products and it makes a 50 food product essentially. Every piece of food has a nutritional value of 0 0.05. So every piece of meat has a nutritional value of 0 0.05. Every piece of kibble has a nutritional value of 0 0.05. Every piece of corn has a nutritional value of 0 0.05. The only things that are different are meals. And there's a few other things that are different, but ma mainly what we're talking about here is meals. So if you're taking 40 pieces of food to create 50 pieces of kibble, you're gaining an end benefit of 10 extra pieces of food. Whereas if you are taking, if you're creating a simple meal, you're taking 10 pieces of food, which could be all the same type. So you could take 10 rice, for instance, or 10 meats, for instance, and that is going to be 50, or I should say 0.5 nutritional values worth of food. Because remember, they're all worth 0.05 
and you are creating something, a simple meal, that gives you 0.85 nutrition. So you're increasing the nutrition by 0.35 compared to the very little amount that you're increasing the nutritional value by doing kibble. The other thing that's cool about making meals is if you go to most animals, like over here I have this, uh, this Arctic wolf, right? So this Arctic wolf is a carnivore for the most part. It eats raw meat, corpses, but then it says meals and kibble. The cool thing is that if you make a meal right here out of simple vegetables, meaning no meat at all, the animal will still eat this. And if we go over to its needs, we can actually watch him consume this. And I'll go ahead and, and there you go. He gets food from that even though there was absolutely no meat in it. And you can go to almost any animal. A lot of them are like this. Like this muffalo over here. This thing takes meals as well. Got a timber wolf down here. This thing takes meals as well. Got a raccoon over here. This thing takes meals as well. Anyway, that's all. I just wanted to share with you that if you can feed your animals meals, it's actually pretty good to do so. The only thing that kibble gets you is that it doesn't go bad outside. You don't have to refrigerate it or freeze it like meals do, but you can always put an animal area inside of your refrigerator near the meals area and they'll eat those meals. I just think it's cool that you can take vegetarian meals and feed them to carnivorous animals. Also, remember that you're going to be getting more experience for making the simple meals than making the kibble because you're going to be running through the items very quickly with the kibble since it takes 40 items to make that kibble and get the exact same amount of experience roughly as making a simple meal, which only takes 10 items. So I would suggest making the kibble if like you have a group of psychopaths that don't mind you butchering human beings <laughs> and you have a bunch of hay that you're growing and you want to slap those two things together in order to get the best benefit out of the butchered people that try and mess with your colony. For more min-maxing, if you have the ability and you have enough vegetables and meats, make sure to make fine meals. The reason why is because it takes the exact same amount of food products. It takes 10 total, 5 vegetable and 5 meat, and you get about... 50% more experience for making a fine meal compared to a simple meal. Very cool. Lavish meals are fine. I recommend them if you're completely overflowing with both vegetables and meats. But the only thing about it is while it does give a little bit more experience than a fine meal, remember it does take twice as much food products to make a lavish meal. 10 vegetable types of food and then 10 meat types of food. Let's move on to construction. Construction is a skill that has to do with basically anything being made that doesn't fall under the crafting skill for the most part when it comes to like inanimate objects and there have you. Something that I often messed up when I was new is thinking that crafting is what made the different furniture, but it's actually all constructing. Now, to get your constructing skill up, all you really have to do is make furniture of any type if you want. The thing about constructing is you get constructing skill as you're person goes through the work to make the item so you get the biggest benefit out of making the biggest item you can for that reason the long tables are one of the best items because it takes the most amount of materials to make you can also deconstruct the constructs that you make to get right around three-fourths of the materials back one of the best ways though to gain constructing skill if you have the ability to do so let's say you burrow into a mountain you're going to have right here rough hewn whatever a rough hewn ground if you go to your floors and you go to smooth floor you can smooth the floor out and i'm just gonna pick on some random guy over here and just kind of utilize him to start smoothing this floor we're gonna notice if we go over to the character and we go over to construction that as he works right there look at his progress jumping up to the next level in construction and this is one way in the game to get your construction skill up and not utilize any resources so you're not burning through any materials and your guys don't have to go anywhere pick up like some wood or some bricks or anything and bring them over they can just sit in one area and smooth all this area out and smooth floors actually provide the best beauty benefit compared to all of your typical flooring that you can get they give a plus three which is pretty impressive considering that normal tile like this sandstone tile over here only gives a plus two so speaking of flooring besides constructing tables or whatever have you and then deconstructing tables another thing that you could also do is put down flooring 
and then constantly go to remove floor after it and remove all of the flooring that you just made. Remember, you do get experience for deconstructing just as you get experience for constructing. Let's go ahead and make some other guy remove this tile over here and watch that construction still continue to rise. Pretty cool. And you're going to see right now he's going to go ahead and make a tile as well. And if you're overflowing with resources, I would also consider armchairs. If you have a bunch of cloth or really any type of leather, you can make cloth or leather armchairs and they train fairly well and they also sell very well if you ever come across a trader that'll buy them. Now we're going to move into crafting. Luckily, crafting is a skill that's very, very easy to get up because there are a couple of ways to do it consistently with almost any map that you'll be on. The two easiest ways, especially in the beginning, like I said, this is aimed toward newer players to get your crafting skill up is one if you didn't know you can always prioritize stone cutting at a stone cutting table you don't have to prioritize you can just cut stone at a stone cutting table and the act of stone cutting will give you crafting experience interestingly so we can watch right here as Fabricate does some stone cutting his skill is going down because he has over a level 10 skill in crafting. And there we go. You can see right there he gained a bit of skill simply from cutting those stones. For maximum speed, if you want, you can put some zones right near your stone cutting bench where they put the blocks and the chunks to make it. The other thing that you could do right in the beginning if you really want to, depending on what sort of resources you have right around you, is you can go over to production, you can create a crafting spot, you can create it wherever you want, I'm just going to put it right here for right now, and you can go ahead and make a few of the different items in the crafting spot, again you'll see that because I have a mod, there's three things here that you wouldn't normally see, which is the cigar, the chocolate cigar, and the cigarette, you would see these things though, such as clubs and short bows. You can make typically clubs, short bows, and tribal wear because you can make these out of almost anything. Clubs you can make out of any type of stone or wood, short bows you can make out of wood, and tribal wear you can make out of any type of cloth or leather. You can do shivs as well, but the only reason that I don't really recommend shivs if you're straight just going for crafting skill is remember, the amount of time that it takes you to craft something, you're going to be gaining skill for the work you put in. And if you go over to the shiv, it only takes a five amount of work to make a shiv. So your guy's going to be getting done with the shivs very quickly and is going to have to walk back over to wherever the materials are to continue to get more of them. Whereas if we go to short bow, for instance, it takes 250 work to make a short bow for 40 wood. So you can craft a short bow for a long, long time and get a lot of experience worth. If we go over to club, a club isn't bad either, but it only takes nine work. So consider that compared to the short bow, which takes, remember, 250. And then if we go over here to the tribal wear, tribal wear is not bad either, but it only takes 54 work. So that's why I typically recommend short bows if you're just starting off and you want to really pump that crafting skill up as quickly as possible. Remember, just like stone cutting, if you don't mind the hassle and the clutter in your area, you can make two little areas right next to your crafting spot. One for like holding wood, for instance, and one for holding the short bow. Once you get up in your levels and crafting, really the sky's the limit. Although what you'll find is that typically you're going to be making weapons and such, and the weapons in this game take a huge amount of work if you make the better weapons. So that means with a huge amount of work, you're going to be getting a huge amount of experience because your guy's going to be sitting at that table for longer not doing very much other than just eating maybe relaxing or throwing some horseshoes and then going back to that table to work on that giant rifle or sniper rifle or whatever you're making at the time so folks i hope that you enjoyed this tutorial about three more of the skills in rim world like i said it's catered toward beginners and if you have any suggestions for future tutorials feel free to let me know in the comments section below i hope this helps you guys out a little bit until the next time folks stay foxy and much love